Thank you for joining us today with this video lecture. First, I just want to remind you to fill out the consent form before you participate in this research and also to take the Zoomerang survey that was sent to you in an email. It's important that you take that survey first before you listen to this lecture. So if you haven't done that, you can leave this lecture and then come back to it later. Also, there's going to be a short quiz that you'll need to take that's posted on Blackboard to demonstrate that you have listened to this lecture. And then at the end of the quarter, you will again receive a similar Zoomerang survey to take at the end. So our lecture is entitled Professionalism in the Classroom and Beyond. How your actions as a student can prepare you for a successful future. It's prepared by myself, Dr. Laura Hall, and Dr. Amanda Lathrop, and both of us teach in the Food Science and Nutrition Department. So our outline for today, uh, first we're going to discuss what professionalism is. We want to uh, make sure that we define that and that everybody understands uh, what we mean when we say professionalism. Second, we're going to talk about why practicing professionalism as a student is important. Um, we're going to talk about some of the key characteristics of a professional person, so what makes a person professional. Then we'll move on to um, discuss some unprofessional behaviors um, that we have observed in the classroom. And then we're going to um, talk about some professional behaviors that you can uh, practice in the classroom. And then finally, we're going to wrap it up and hopefully tie it to um, some employer expectations so you can really see how being a professional in the classroom is going to help better prepare you for your future career. So first off, what is the definition of professionalism? Well, we have um, a definition here from Webster's Dictionary, and they define it as the conduct, aims, or qualities that characterize or mark a professional or a, uh, a professional person. So Business Dictionary uh, provides a little bit different of a definition. Uh, what I kind of liked about this definition was is uh, they talk about an undeviating courtesy, honesty, and responsibility in one's dealings with customers and associates. Uh, for us, the customers and associates are really our fellow students or our professors. In the future, these could be our clients, um, our bosses, any patients that we may deal with. Um, and then this, uh, they talk about this level of excellence that goes over and beyond um, really what's expected. So, um, so this is a really good definition of, of what professionalism is. So after defining professionalism, the next question becomes, why is practicing professionalism as a student important? And there are several reasons. Studies have shown that unprofessional behavior during undergraduate and postgraduate education is associated with un unprofessional behavior after graduation. So what this is really saying is that it's important to set up these good habits now as a student because they will impact your future career. So to continue talking about other studies, there was one study that found that 50% or more of a hiring decision is based on assessing the applicant's professionalism. So this goes beyond, beyond, above and beyond just what's on paper and what's on your resume and good grades and experiences, but it's those other qualities that the person possesses that cannot be measured on paper. And more than 37% of employers nationwide reported that less than half of new graduates that they hire exhibit professionalism in their first year on the job. Okay, and so if you're not exhibiting professionalism during your first year, that's going to decrease your chances of getting a promotion or being retained for that job. So these employers are stressing that we need to reinforce the soft skills such as workplace etiquette and having a positive demeanor. So what we're really trying to instill in you is that professionalism matters. And the best way to become a professional is to live it every day and to practice it. Because the more you practice it now, the more it will become part of your nature and will follow you as you go into your future career. So what makes someone professional? What are some uh, characteristics that we notice of a professional person? Uh, the first one and maybe most obvious is 
competence. So um, whatever your chosen uh, field is, whether it's uh, food science, uh, parks and recreation, nutrition, um, you know, you're here at school to um, gain that mastery or uh, currency in your chosen field. But once, you're, you, once you've graduated and you're out of here, um, you're going to look or you're going to want to continue to educate yourself in your, your chosen field. Um, another characteristic is uh, commitment. And when I say commitment, this is really acting in the best interest of the client, your boss, the company, um, your patient. Another real important thing is integrity and honesty, so um, you really want to be incorruptible. Then morality and ethics, so you want to be acting in the uh, best interest of uh, the public. Uh, Self-regulation is something that's important not to forget, so being accountable for one's actions. So there are going to be times when you do make mistakes in the classroom or um, on your job and you need to take responsibility for um, the mistakes that have happened. And then finally teamwork. Uh, teamwork is, is going to be really important in the classroom and beyond. Uh, you need to recognize and respect respect the expertise of others and uh, value value their time that they're putting into the project. So we just talked about what makes someone professional. The next question becomes, well, what are some unprofessional behaviors? And we're going to go through four different scenarios. For the first scenario, texting in class. Okay, so why would someone want to text in class? Or why would you want to text in class? And if you think about that question, there's lots of different reasons and many personal reasons that you would want to text in class. But we really need to ask ourselves, why shouldn't we text in class? Well, first of all, it distracts us from the short amount of time that we have to learn a lot of material in the classroom. There's so much material that you have to go over that you really want to focus on that and not distract yourself. Not only does it distract yourself because you get involved in a conversation through texting, but it's also going to distract others that are by you and that are trying to learn. They're going to see that you have your phone out and, and that's going to distract them. Not only does it distract yourself and the people around you, but it's very disrespectful to your teacher. Um, believe it or not, the professors in the front of the classroom see a lot and they see what's going on and they can see if your eyes are down and you're texting or even if you're texting under your desk and it can actually interrupt their train of thought and um, interrupt the whole class and the flow of the class. So keep in mind that there's plenty of time outside of class to text, okay? So stay focused while you're in class and make your learning a priority. So the take home message with scenario one is do not take out your phone during class. Just turn it off. Show that you value the time in class. If you have it off, it's not going to distract you. And then the second you get out of the class, you're welcome to turn your phone on again. The second unprofessional behavior that we wanted to talk about was a uh, late arrival to class. So why would someone arrive late to class? Um, there are a lot of uh, potentially legitimate reasons, um, but at the end of the day, most of the time why students uh, show up late to class is because they just did not uh, budget their time correctly. So maybe you didn't give yourself enough time to find parking or you thought you had plenty of time to stand in the line at Starbucks to get your cup of coffee. Um, but it, it mainly comes down to not budgeting your time uh, correctly. So why shouldn't we be late to class? Well, if we show up late for class, that doesn't really give us any time to switch on um, to our learning or switch our learning hat on. And we may or you may end up spending uh, much of the class trying to catch up and figure out uh, where where you're at in lecture. Uh, another thing is if you is if you show up late, you may miss important announcements or info. Uh, you know there may be an assignment that uh, the due date was changed, and now um, now you've missed that. Uh, showing up late for class is going to distract others who are trying to pay attention. We've all been in a classroom where uh, a student has come in late and the door opens, they shuffle to their desk and it, it draws our attention away from the lecture and onto that person coming in. Uh, it not only distracts your fellow students, but it um, could also interrupt your, your teacher. Um, they may lose their train of thought 
and um, and it's just going to reflect poorly on you as a student. So at the end of the day, we want to make sure that you're uh, budgeting your time correctly. If you're just a late person, you're going to have to um, give yourself an extra 10 or 15 minutes to get to class. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there could potentially be some uh, legitimate reasons why you're arriving late for class. Maybe you have a phone interview or something that uh, ran a little bit long. Um, you know, maybe there's an important appointment that you have to be to. And if this is the case, you really want to make sure that you're contacting your teacher ahead of time to let you let them know that you are going to be late. And uh, when you do come in, you just want to make sure that you come in quietly and try to find a location in the room uh, to sit where uh, you would be least disruptive to the class as a whole. So our third scenario is not wearing the appropriate lab attire. So the question becomes, why would someone forget to wear their lab attire? Well, it could just be, oops, I forgot I had lab today. I thought today was Tuesday, but it's Wednesday. And there are lots of reasons why you might forget. It was a beautiful day and you threw your sandals on instead of your tennis shoes. It is easy to forget. But why shouldn't we forget our appropriate lab attire? Well, first of all, you could be sent home and you could miss an important lab. At the same time, you could lose points and you'll have a harder time trying to play catch up later and have a harder time on the exam because you've missed that important lab. And not only for those reasons that you might be sent home, but if you were to stay, it could be very dangerous to your health and safety. And that's why those rules are there in the first place, it's to protect you. So showing up without the appropriate lab attire also takes away the teacher's time in class to deal with the situation. So then everyone's going to start late and it's going to send the message that you don't value everyone's lab time or the rules of the class. So the take home message, put a reminder in your phone. Okay, so you're going to have your phone on in between classes and you could have it go off um, 15 minutes before the class starts, or you could have it go off in the morning as part of your alarm clock. Keep an extra pair of closed-toed shoes in your car, so just in case you are so busy you forgot what day it is, you can go pull out your tennis shoes instead of your flip-flops. And just take responsibility for your actions. If you do have to go home, um, see if you can make up that lab or get um, complete lab notes from somebody and uh, try not to make the mistake again. The final unprofessional behavior we wanted to talk about was uh, letting your group down. So oftentimes you are required to um, participate in a lab group or you may have uh, a group assignment. And um, oftentimes as professors we hear uh, students complain about uh, group members not uh, pulling their weight. So why would someone not pull their weight during a group project? Um, there are, are many reasons. One of them may be that you're uh, too busy. Maybe uh, you have some work um, not related to school that needs to get taken care of. Uh, you might not be interested in, in the topic that, uh, that, that your assignment is on. And uh, you may feel like uh, someone else will just take care of your work if you, if you don't do it. Um, you know, we're not always uh, or every topic that we discuss in class may not be of the uh, most interest to you, but it's still uh, really important to put forth uh, the full effort uh, and, and not let your group down. So why shouldn't we let our group down? Uh, well, the other students count on us or count on you to do your part so that everyone uh, can get a good grade. Uh, they too are just as busy with uh, busy with other stuff as well, and nobody wants to do um, extra work or someone else's work. Um, in the future, no one uh, will want to work with you if you get uh, tagged as a person who um, who doesn't uh, contribute uh, their share to a group project. So uh, once again. Uh, what you want to do to make sure that you're um, being a good group member is to uh, budget your time correctly so that if there's uh, some sort of uh, part of the assignment that you need to take care of when you meet with your group uh, that you can have that done and ready when you guys guys meet. Um, another thing that you may want to consider doing is, is letting the um, teacher know if someone in your group is not pulling their weight so that um, that maybe the professor could talk to that student or uh, maybe the professor could 
provide you with some ideas on how to motivate that student to be more uh, productive. And if those methods don't work, then uh, the professor may be able to, um, to adjust uh, the group grades uh, appropriately. And the other important thing to remember is that you will always have to work with others, um, not just in the school setting, but in your future job. And, um, and that there are, there are going to be um, projects and stuff that are not of high interest or maybe you just don't uh, like altogether and you're still going to have to uh, complete that task in a timely manner. So the next question becomes, how can we be professionals in the classroom? And we need to show a dedicated desire to learn. So when you think about it, you're spending a lot of time and energy and money to pay for your college education. And so you really need to think about it as your career. You also need to show respect towards others. Okay, just think about how you would want to be treated and treat others the same way. Okay, and along those lines, consistently exhibit honesty and integrity. Okay, and we'll go through each of these. So the first one, show a dedicated desire to learn. Okay, how can we do that? Well, really, you want to be prepared for class, lab, and exams. So if you think about your future career and if you were to show up to uh, an employee meeting, and if you weren't prepared, if you didn't come with a notepad and a pen, you know, your, your future employer would not look fondly upon that. People want to see that you're, you're ready to go and that you're excited to be a part of something. So it's important that you actively participate in class and lab. Again, this is your time to learn and your time to ask questions. So sit in the front of the class, be engaged, and ask questions. At the same time, so that you can fully be engaged, do not text, like I said earlier, you know, put your phone away, just forget about it for that, that hour that you're in class. If you are gonna take a laptop out, please use it for the class and for taking notes. You don't wanna use it for personal things or reading your email or other non-class material. Again, it's gonna distract you and it's gonna distract the individuals around you because they're gonna be able to see what's on your screen. And even the teacher is gonna notice that you're not taking notes and it looks like you're doing something else with the laptop. Also important to complete all course requirements on time and show that you're interested in the class and seek out clarification, tutoring, or other assistance when necessary. This is really important. You know, if you don't do well on the first exam, don't wait and see how you do on the second exam. You know, uh, be proactive and seek out help. Go visit the teacher during the, uh, their office hour. That's what they're here for is to help you. Maybe you need to get a tutor. Maybe they need to go over the notes with you. So that's really important to do ahead of time and that's one way to be a professional. Also stay informed. Um, check email, check Blackboard communications, just like you would check your Facebook page. Really important to do this for your classes as well. So a little bit more on showing respect towards others. So of course you want to be cordial, respectful, polite with all your interactions with professors and your peers. And this is not just the interactions you have with them face-to-face uh, -face in lab or lecture. Um, the same goes with emails. Uh, they should be uh, written professionally. They should be um, very uh, respectful uh, to um, whoever you're communicating to. Another thing is, is it's uh, you really need to be following the teacher's directions in class or lab. So if they um, ask you to get into group and have some sort of discussion about a topic, uh, you shouldn't be uh, talking about something not related to the class. You should be focused on uh, the discussion at hand. Uh, you want to have appropriate behavior in class and lab. Uh, such that you're not going to interfere with others ability to learn or fa the faculty's ability uh, to teach. Um, so this gets uh, back a little bit to the, the slide before where we would talk about uh, texting and laptops. But um, you know in, in lab it may be you know just uh, focusing on uh, the experiment that you're supposed to be doing and not uh, messing around with uh, some of the chemicals or other things um, that you, you shouldn't be doing. Another thing uh, that's important to consider is appropriate dress. Um, and we're not just talking about wearing closed-toed shoes and long pants in the lab. Um, your dress should be consistent with that of a professional. And um, so it shouldn't look like you just uh, 
rolled out of bed and went to class. Um, you're not going to the beach either. So, um, so you just want to take note or be a little bit more cautious about your attire in the classroom. And then another uh, way to show uh, respect towards other, particularly uh, your professor or maybe your uh, group members, is um, it's really your responsibility or you should uh, notify um, the professor when you're ill and or if there's some sort of uh, prior um, absence that you need to be gone from, from class. So maybe there was a death in the family, yeah, important doctor's appointment, uh, maybe you're involved with sports. Um, all of those planned absences need to be um, uh, you know, told to the professor uh, before you, you leave. So the third point to follow is to consistently exhibit honesty and integrity. So it's very important to present your work as your own, okay, and you've heard this many times in your classes, but it's also part of being a professional. Okay, pulling your weight during group projects, we've talked about this and how important it is. Also to comply with campus and university policies and guidelines regarding student conduct, treatment of other members of the Cal Poly community, and ethics. So even when there's that um, time before class actually starts, think about what you're saying and what your actions are telling the other students and, and know that other students are listening and your professors um, and your professor is also listening. So think about what you're saying and make sure that it's respectful and considers other students in the classroom. Also to respect the time that everyone is putting into the class. So this is, you know, not only yourself, but the fellow students and teachers. And I think something that's also important too is not just how you represent yourself in class, but how you represent yourself out in the community. So for different internships that you have or other opportunities, very important to show up on time and dress professionally. You're representing Cal Poly and you're representing yourself and it might even be to a future employer. So very important um, that you act as a professional out in the community along with the classroom. So another thing that we wanted to talk about was um, attitude and attitude really is everything. So um, professionalism doesn't mean you have to have a stern or grim uh, disposition. Uh, you should have fun in your uh, classes and labs and your interactions with uh, uh, students and uh, faculty members. Uh, no one likes someone who, has, uh, who is grumpy or has a bad attitude. And, um, and that all kind of ties in as well as to practicing being a good leader. So people don't like to, to follow uh, someone who is, is not a happy person. Uh, the other thing uh, with regards to attitude is it's very uh, important to focus on you and putting your vet best foot forward. I know it's oftentimes hard not to or not to compare ourselves to others. So you know there may be a student who doesn't pull their weight, and you think, well, why should I be pulling my weight? Uh, you know, there may be a student who uh, does a little better than you on some exams. Um, you need to not focus on what your peers are doing and just focus on uh, making yourself the best uh, student or as, as professional as you can, can be. So how does uh, professionalism in the classroom uh, prepare you for your future career? Well, we actually um, pulled together some uh, comments from employers and uh, I guess what they expect in terms of uh, professionalism in the workforce or what that looks like. Uh, one of the things they said was that it's important for their employees to take ownership of your learning. So when you start a new job, there's going to be a lot of stuff that you have to learn. Uh, we teach you a lot in school, but there's a lot more to learn out there. So you need to take ownership of this and be interested in uh, wanting to learn. Uh, they um, expect you to be a leader and take initiative. So if you um, see somewhere where they might be able to improve something or if you see a problem, uh, they want you to take initiative to, to say something or bring that to someone's attention. They say be on time always, early is better, and late is never acceptable. So, um, so just something to take into consideration when you get out there being late that's not something that's that's appropriate or something that you should do. Uh, another thing is to have fun at work but always remember work is for work. Uh, they uh, say that they don't want you talking on your personal cell phones, they don't want you looking at your Facebook or Twitter 
all of that uh, stuff is for after work. So what's interesting about these, um, these couple comments up here is these are the same uh, student-centered traits that we just talked about. Um, and I guess just maybe to give you a little example of, uh, I guess, maybe some things that I did uh, professionally when I was um, previously em employed um, at a, a company is um, I was there for about a year. And after that year, they um, had wanted to promote me to be in charge of the department that I was working in. And I really think that was because I practiced a lot of these points that are mentioned above. So I really took ownership of uh, learning my new job. Um, I took initiative to seek out uh, you know, advice or to seek out answers to certain questions that I had. Um, I made it a point to show up to work before my boss got there and I made it a point to never leave before my boss left and um, I of course didn't uh, use any of my uh, personal cell phones Facebook um, Twitter and um, and I really enjoyed my work so having fun there uh, wasn't uh, wasn't hard for me to do but I really think that 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 is what uh, made me stick out as an employee and what uh, made them want to uh, promote me relatively soon So here are some other comments that can help you um, transfer your knowledge of being professional in the classroom to your future career. So really important to be assertive, but not aggressive. Okay, to be friendly and to make friends at work and have a positive attitude, but not be ob obnoxious at the same time. And in today's world, as a management level employee, you really are the face of the company. This is 24-7, 365, and the way you live your personal life will become a reflection of your professional life. So think about what you're putting on Facebook. Your boss could look at that. A lot of employers now are even going to Facebook and looking at the people that they're about to employ and you know, seeing, hey, does their personal life fit with what we think this person should be in our company. Um, even the uh, internship directors are doing that and employers are doing that because yeah, someone could look great on paper, but again, those, those soft traits of um, how you represent yourself out in your everyday life is really important. Also, take care of the people who work for you directly and indirectly, okay? So we talk a lot about being a professional, you know, it's kind of you're working your way um, up the career ladder, but once you get to that level where you're a manager, think about those that work for you and continue to set an example of being a professional for them. And so we really want the take home message to be that it's important to be a professional student now and employers will really seek you out. So Dr. Lathrop gave an example about being professional in her first career. And for me, when I was a student at Cal Poly, because yes, I was an undergrad here, I got involved in a lot of different things. Um, leader of the nutrition club. I was involved with peer health. I helped with different research projects on campus. And little did I know that those things showing up on time, dressing professionally, being willing to work and help and go out of my way to do things, you know, little did I know that that would actually help me get a job here later in life. So after um, getting my RD, becoming a registered dietitian, and then getting my PhD, um, someone from the campus actually sought me out and asked, when are you going to be done with your PhD? You know, we remember you as a student here. We'd really love for you to come work here. And so that's why I put employers will seek you because what you do as a student now um, really stands for a lot and really says a lot. So it's very important to start practicing these behaviors now. So in conclusion, professionalism as a student equals success in the workforce. And that's really why we want to talk about this. And, and some of these things as we're going through them, you're probably thinking, okay, yes, I realize that those aren't professional, but you know, start thinking, well, have I been doing those? How could I change my behavior? Um, and we would like that to be the take home message for you. So set up those good habits now. And again, practice makes perfect. So it's just good to make it a lifestyle. 
And think of how you would want to be treated. So think about your fellow classmates. Just, you know, you're not an isolated person in a classroom. There's people around you trying to learn. And even think, you know, if you were the teacher, would you want students being distracted and texting and reading other things and not listening? Um, you know, think think about that. You would want your students paying attention and, and learning as much as they can in that short amount of time they have in the classroom. So treat going to school as if it was your career, because really it is your biggest job right now. I said earlier, you're spending a lot of time and money um, and attention into your to your schoolwork. And so think of it as your career. You're a professional student, and that's going to lead you into your career. Okay, so everything you do now is important to pra practice, and we wish you the best as you... Um, go through your career here at Cal Poly and as you're looking for a job and we thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this lecture and for being a part of our research. We appreciate all of your help and don't forget to take the quiz on Blackboard when you're done. Thank you.